when I was a casual, I thought as a casual, I spoke like a casual, and I looked at boxing like a casual. But when I became a hardcore, I put away all those casual things. This is Michael Rogers, and welcome to Bodywork Box. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Bodywork Boxing. And man, oh man, Ken ride out from Teddy Atlas show, Teddy, uh, the fight with Teddy Atlas. He was never, ever, 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 ever wrong in what he said about if you ever want to commit a robbery, just get three judges. Because Josh Chandler just clearly got outclassed, outboxed, and outmaneuvered by one Jack Catterall. I scored the fight. Going into the fight, Josh Taylor was a minus 1300. Catterall was a plus 800. So if you put down $100, you would get $800 plus your $100 back if you put it down on Jack. Catterall and everybody who placed their bets on Jack Catterall got robbed that's what makes this such a grave injustice from the first round I had Jack Catterall winning the second round I had Josh Taylor winning the third round you can kind of say it was a swing round the fourth round I gave it to Jack Catterall Josh Taylor was giving up his length Catterall was hitting him two and three times. He had, uh, Josh Taylor had already had a, um, a mouse up under his eye in the fifth round. In the same fifth round, Jack Catterall hit him with a three piece. I noticed that Josh Taylor wasn't using his height. He wasn't using his length. In the fifth round, he was being outlanded 35 to 56 in favor of Jack Catterall. In the sixth round, Jack Catterall landed at will. In the seventh round, um, Josh kept tying him up. Uh, I think when they went to Kell Brook in the seventh round, going into the eighth, Kell Brook even said that Jack Catterall was up going into the eighth round. In the eighth round, Josh Taylor got dropped by a... I mean, it was like it was like an overhand left, but it was kind of like a left hook. It was like a variation. I don't know what you want to call it. It was like a left hook or overhand left. And 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 Andre Ward, man, they gotta stop that bullshit. Andre Ward, man, that man is full of some bullshit. This man kept talking about body language, and then Tim and then Tim Bradley with his dumb ass kept saying. Oh man, like the more aggressive fight of his Josh Taylor, you can be aggressive all you want, but if you're being aggressive but you're getting outlanded, that means it's not effective aggression. Eureka! <laughs> Which is part of the scoring. It's, it's defense, effective aggression, ring generalship, and I think punches landed. Don't quote me, but it's four criteria. This is how you know the tail of the tape. In the ninth round, going into the tenth, Josh Taylor's corner told him, look, man, you got to start taking risk. You don't believe me? Go back and do your homework and listen to what the corner said. The referee took a point deduction from Jack Catterall in the tenth. Josh Taylor tried to do a little something. A little something, something in the eleventh, and it was over in the in the eleventh. They actually took a point from uh, Josh Taylor, and in the twelfth round, it was clear that, that Jack Catterall had actually won that fight. The man got robbed, man, and and that's why I say I lean to the Tank Davises of the world. I lean to the Gary Antoine Russells of the world. The ones who are not going to, I mean, I would even say Boots Ennis, man. They, these guys, man, they are not going to leave it in the judges' hands, man. You can't. 
Robbery, 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 man. This wasn't, uh, was it as bad? I think it was actually worse than the, um, the Oscar Valdez Robinson Kessacey, y'all, because Josh Taylor face was fucked up after this fight. Just like it was fucked up after the Regis fight, but you got to think about it. Combi Box saw Catterall land 120 out of 525 total punches. So he was 23%. And 81 out of 267, which is 30% of his power punches. Taylor was 73 out of 306 for 24% overall. And 57 out of 179, which is 32% on power shots. So, if we look at percentages, Josh Taylor won. It's, but it's not about percentages. Because what that means is that Josh Taylor missed a lot of punches. <laughs> Catterall outworked and outlanded Taylor on the punch stats. But of course, they're going to say that the stats don't count for the scoring round by round, of course. So let's think about it. Catterall outlanded Josh Taylor 120 to 73 overall. So that means Catterall landed 120 punches. Josh Taylor landed 73. And out of the power punches, which is the ones that mean the most, Jack Catterall outlanded Josh Taylor 73 to 57. So that pretty much means everything outside of the jab. He was landing 73 to 57. Catterall also dropped, dropped Josh Taylor in the eighth round. Josh Taylor never dropped Jack Catterall. Catterall got a, a point deduction in the 10th round, but then Josh Taylor also got a point deducted in the 11th round. I ain't no genius, but you got to tell me how in the hell Josh Taylor... How in the hell did Josh Taylor win that fight? And I like Josh Taylor. I was going to do this whole episode actually took a turn because I was going to do the feather in Josh Taylor's cap. But, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to give him the feather in his cap. I do respect him because he grabbed his nuts and he actually defended the undisputed, which I would want more of these guys to do. Don't just go get, don't just go get all of the belts. Go defend them and clear out the division for the new upper comings at least three or four times until you clear it out to, to really make that stamp to say, but I, I, I tip my hat to Josh Taylor, man. I'm not really going to shit on him, but the judges did rob Jack Catterall. You know, I mean, it would it, I mean, it would be crazy for Jack Catterall to come around after Josh Taylor did all that heavy lifting and just lift up all them straps. But, hey, he was the better man, man. You got to look at his face. Look at the numbers. <laughs> How can you score that fight for Josh Taylor based on what I just said? Then you got to look at the fact, look at the picture on my thumbnail where Josh Taylor's skull was, you can actually see the indentation on his skull from when he was weight drained, and everybody was talking about that. He wasn't his full self. He didn't fight to his full potential. He didn't utilize his length. He didn't utilize his height, and, and, and it was clear that Jack Catterall was the better man. However, the judges took it from him. So let that be a lesson. And to the, to the Blue Blood TVs of the world who want to try to say that Josh Taylor would, you know, was calling out Tank Davis and all this nonsense. <laughs> I beg to differ, homie, because they put the mic in my man's face and Josh Taylor never said Tank Davis' name. I believe Bud had already came out and said, man, look, man, Josh Taylor don't want any of the smoke. But I think that is the play all along because him being weight drained and him forcing to be moved up, it just goes along with the storyline as far as the fight being made between Bud and Josh. Anyways, that's all, man. That's my recap on this fight, man. It was a, it was, it was a good scrap, man. I, I You know, my heart goes out to Jack Catterall, even though I don't know the brother. That's why I didn't do the pre-fight that much because I wasn't going to be like most of your content creators. Who's going to sit up here and act like they knew all about Jack Catterall and everything he was doing and try to make all this grand, whatever, like they know everything about motherfucking boxing. Even though he was an undefeated fighter and tonight he showed he was the better man. Like, comment, and subscribe. 
That's it. That's all. Body work. All right. I believe you. But my tummy can don't. Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. And I do what I do. He knows what I'm about to tell him right now. It's Mr. Keep running your mouth. That's what I do. I just feel like I'm the champ, and at the end of the day, I'm just, a, I'm just a fighting my focus. It doesn't matter. Inside, outside, I can just fight. So I just feel like if you, if you, if you get down to the wire, you know, you're gonna get your ass beat. So I just feel like I'm the champ, and at the end of the day, I'm just a, I'm just a fighting my focus. It doesn't matter. Inside, outside, I can just fight. So I just feel like if you, if you get down to the wire, you're gonna get your ass beat. So I just feel like I'm the champ. Again, I, I stay solid. I'm always solid. I stay fucked up. You know what I'm saying? It's a plan. 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 You know what I'm saying? It's a plan.